Mario Franchitti in the points lead, but it is indeed Ryan Briscoe who is in the points lead, and he picked up a point yesterday as he won the peak pole qualifying award and $10,000. Ryan Briscoe and Dario Franchitti both have four poles this year. Ray Hall, Castro Nevis, and Power have two each, and Scott Dixon was on the pole at Kentucky with the starting lineup determined by owner points. All right, here comes the lineup. We've got 23 cars strong. Three of the eight races have been won from the pole position here. Remember last year, Elio, because he went below the white line on the backstretch during qualifying, he was sent to the rear of the field and came home to win the race. And he also led the most laps. So even though you got to want to qualify at the front, the guys in the back, can they get up and win this race and lead laps? You bet. I don't think there's a person that we've talked to Robbie that didn't say, you know, I didn't qualify quite as quickly as I wanted to, but I got a good race car. <laughs> that's, that's all the, the way theme. through. All <laughs> the way through the bit. The car's great in the race. So if everybody's got a great race car, we're up for a great race. The only reason you would want not want to start in the back is the possibility of something happening up front between you and the leaders, but we'll hope that doesn't happen all evening. Jack Aroot on pit lane. Well, guys, look, there's no question that the weather is going to be a critical factor in the performance for all these teams tonight. In fact, Jan, as you talked about in your in your on camera, it's going to be starts and restarts. Now, that may give an advantage to a guy like Tony Kanan, who makes his living clipping off three or four cars on a restart. But I talked to a lot of the crews and I talked to the Firestone engineers. They say these tires could take as much as two full laps on starts and restarts to come up to full heat and pressure. So what's the winning combination? The strategy? tonight well I think it's real simple you got to stay with the lead pack that's number one and if you do that and you draft and you're not leading you're going to be able to maybe make some fuel why do you want to make fuel because this is a four stop race with the way it shakes out and that means what you want to do is count backwards what you want to do is short pit that last final stop why because you'll be able to change the tires faster than you can fill it full of fuel you don't have to fill it full because you've pitted last it may take you to victory lane guys Lindy well, Jack, four guys vying for this points title, two sets of teammates. Elio's fourth. He says it'd take a lot of luck for him to pull this out. He says if he cannot win, he does all that he can to help Ryan Briscoe. Dario and Scott say the same thing. They all say that is just what teammates do, Robbie. Well, some tough times for the McDonald's team leaving Sonoma. They're hoping that may play in their favor. You remember last year when uh, it was just before Sonoma, the Penske truck caught on fire? Well, this year, the hauler for the McDonald's team, both of them broke down. Mike Rogers, truck driver, he, his truck broke down in Nebraska. Dean Brum, the truck driver, broke down in Nevada. Both guys got their trucks going eventually. They were late coming into Chi-Town, and they're hoping that maybe just like with Penske, their drivers could finish one and two here tonight. Graham Ray Hall starts from fifth position, getting those tires warmed up. Now here is the overtake assist situation. You have 20 pushes, 12 seconds, and there is a 10 second recharge time. And we have seen that work very, very well at other ovals, including Kentucky earlier this month. And of course, it's a five horsepower gain, which doesn't sound like much, but on a flat out oval, as we saw in Kentucky, that was just enough to help somebody. That's why it's called overtake assist. Helps you finish the pass. One to go, and we will be under green. Sarah Fischel starts her final race in this car. She's going to have the new backup at Homestead Miami Speedway. Ed Carpenter wanting to move up just one position from his finish at Kentucky. He came oh so close to winning that event. Dan Weldon driving for Panther Racing here at Chicagoland for the first time since 2001. He started seventh and finished 10th. Marco Andretti finished eighth here last year, but's never led a lap at Chicagoland Speedway. Tony Kanaan will carry an on board is winless this year. He won at least one race in the last six straight seasons. And Ryan Briscoe is our pole sitter. Finished second again last Sunday afternoon at Infineon. Well, the field getting lined up. This should be good, folks. Settle back, relax, and have a good evening of racing. Let's hope it's a safe one as they come down and get the Apex Brazil green flag. Commitment and intensity. Tony Kanaan going high.
as Jack made reference to, he's one guy that always likes to make up spots on cold tires. He's a master of it. Dario in third under Kanan. Look at those sparks, yep. just as forecast. Off the fourth corner, into the trioval. And lap number one is led by Briscoe, then Castro Nevis. Frankini, Kanan running side by side, and back there is Dixon and Rahal. On board with Kanan looking over at Dario. A lot of grip all throughout this racetrack. We will see guys three wide and even four wide. And part of that is there's a lot of grip all the way through this racetrack. Kentucky was wide just like Chicago, but I think there's a little bit more grip out here. So it just creates the opportunity for these guys to challenge even higher on the racetrack. First lap was 203, second lap 212 miles an hour. Temperatures are coming up on the tires and we've got a battle up front as Elio looks to the high side of Brian, but ducks back inside. It looks so calm just looking back out there, doesn't it? Remember the speed <laughs> these guys are doing? Yeah, that kind of well. lulls us into it, but they are getting after it, and it's going to be that way for 200 laps. Seven cars running right together on the racetrack. Now, we have talked about cold tires. Look at this, Ooh. ducking and weaving up and down, and at the start, it was definitely a case for Rafael Matos on the right side of the screen. He'll just come into the picture. Number two, he gets below the white line in a big wiggle. He manages to save it, and everybody gets through clean. But boy, until they come up, it's dicey. Three wide into turns one and two. That's Weldon behind Andretti. Now Weldon alongside Marco through the third and fourth corners. Ed started in 12th position and is now running six. So Carpenter is hoping to have another good run, just like he did at Kentucky. Oh, oh. Almost touching wheels. It's Dixon and Kanan. And Scott Dang. Dixon, to me, hadn't been all that racy, hadn't been quite as sharp as you'd expect, but right now that car looks good. He's by himself up there on the top. Carpenter had to lift to not get sucked in too close. Yeah, and remember, Scott Dixon was one of the cars that decided to make a last-second gear stack change. They saw the wind, and you see him coming up on Tony Kanan. That's exactly why they made that change as he goes to the outside and initiates and completes the pass and brings Ed Carpenter along. They decided that with the drop in the temperature, with the increase in the wind, they went in a different direction. Remember, that's why he was late to his interview. And it's amazing, right as you were talking, Jack, the reason he lost that spot was he had to lift and yeah, grab a gear. Sure did. So you're they, talking about gear stack. At the very same time, he had to take a different gear, and he just got blown by. Yeah. And when they started this race, I mean, they didn't know what gear package they yeah. needed. We haven't run in this kind of wind. So it absolutely is a guess, and it looks like the Dixon crew, they guessed perfect in terms <laughs> of what that gear stack is that they wanted at that last minute. Go. He hasn't shown anywhere near this kind of speed all weekend. But you know when it comes to these kind of racetracks and a championship, look at them come. Now Dixon looks to the high side of Briscoe, wanting the lead. Off the second corner and down the back stretch. Falls in behind Ryan. Now he'll make a move up top. And you notice less sparks. And that means the tires are coming up to pressure and temperature. You don't see, you see a few here and there. That means these cars are getting racing. So Dixon's just going to keep working on Briscoe right now. He's just going to kind of see where his strengths are. He's going to keep poking up a little bit on the high side there to just get clean air, but they're just sizing each other up right now. Tony Canal now looks to the high side of Ed Carpenter. Mario Marias and Graham Rahal are running side by side behind Tony Canon. First 15 cars separated by less than two seconds. You'll see it if it happens on IndyCar nonstop. Right now it's Briscoe leading Dixon and Frankiti. The peak antifreeze and motor oil Indy 300 of Chicago on Versus is presented by Peak Performance Products. When you peak, you win. And by Honda, the engine supplier for the IndyCar series. And by Apex Brazil. To learn more about our Brazilian goods and services, log on to experienceourenergy.com. Lead pack consists of 16 cars, and they're running within one second of each other. Here's the situation up front. Ryan Briscoe leads. Scott Dixon is second. 
Dario Franchitti third and Ed Carpenter looking for a position. Now here comes the second pack and that's led by Ryan Hunter Ray on board with Marco Andretti. And if you watch his steering wheel you could see that when he comes off of these corners look how high he's getting. But when he gets into a tailwind on the other side of the racetrack if we can stay on here you'll see he has to grab another gear as soon as these indicators right up at the top of the wheel will start to illuminate. There's a gear. There's and Marco wants a good finish so bad yesterday I looked at his feet and noticed he had on a red shoe and a blue shoe. I said Marco I've never noticed that before. Do you always do that? He said no but I am trying anything at this point to have a great finish. Well, Marco started in the seventh spot and he's fallen back right now to the 15th. So obviously there's something he's still trying to get a handle on with his race car, whether it's balance, gearing, I don't know. We've seen the, seen, seen the same thing with Tony Kanan that when you have to start grabbing gears, people go by you. So those who chose that right gear stack that Jack was talking about very early on seems to be on the keys. Now, Schechter up high, has been making a move, likes to run and makes big moves and likes to do it high. And Schechter's one of those guys, when I said at the, the top of the show, just you have to have that confidence with the race car to take it to another spot where maybe you don't like it very much and the car slides, but you just got to trust it and catch it. Schechter's a guy that's in the category. He knows how to drive the car that hard. He's taken 10th position from Danica Patrick. And Thomas Schechter talked to him. I mean, this is a guy who's led 114 total laps at this racetrack Whoa. alone, a two-time IndyCar Series winners, as he's battling it out with Danica Patrick. I asked him, I said, is this going to be the place? With it being cold and everybody kind of, you know, tentative on the start, is this a place that you can really push on the start? And he said, I really don't think so, because everybody's going to be flat out here. I can usually do that in the places where he will have that option to let off. Here, I don't think they have that option. So even though he's moved up three and sometimes four spots, I think he's just picking them off one at a time and everything's going according to his game plan. And he does have just that game plan. I talked to him right when he got out of the car after that crazy last practice we had <laughs> yesterday. And I said, how are things? He's like, everything's good, good. I'm like, okay, I don't need to ask you anything more. I mean, just a quick snapshot, good. He's running with Mario Marias in the KB Racing Technology number five car. Marias running in ninth. But boy, he put the chop to Danica Patrick right when yeah, Robbie Floyd was. We both went, whoa, <laughs> because when you pass somebody, you know, that's why you have the spotters telling you clear. They might have told him clear a little bit early because he definitely took the air off the top of off the front of Danica's car. Spotters are just a tool. <laughs> the drivers are there. They're the ones driving, making decisions. The spotters are just information. Objects are closer than they appear. <laughs> Spotters, it's very good information. They need to help look ahead and, and tell the drivers what's going on. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's the guy in the cockpit that's, you know, chopping, not chopping, doing what he needs to do. Mario Marias. And he has been a rocket ship since he rolled. His car just look fast here since he rolled off in that Azul car for KV Racing. That's Oriol Servia that he's running with. Look at that progression in speed. Yeah, three miles an hour in three laps. Remember, you're not lifting around this racetrack. You are just hammered flat down, and you are trying to carry that momentum everywhere. If you're lifting, like when we were riding on board with Kanan, and he lifted off the gas, zing, zing, guys went right by him. So you want to run flat all day long. Ryan Briscoe leads his 11th race this season, the most of any driver. Hot on his heels is Scott Dixon, as 26 of 200 laps have been completed. season next will be on September 18th at 10:30 Eastern Time the Indy Japan 300 from Twin Ring Motegi another step toward the 2009 championship 
That's, of course, where Danica Patrick won her one and only race last year. It's part of versus red, white, black, and blue summer. There is Danica live, and she is currently running in 16th position. She's been falling back, as has Tony Kanaan. Of course, their teammates. That was a close moment between Marias and Graham Rahal, but the Andretti green cars, at least those two for Kanaan and Patrick, we heard that Tony Kanaan is having some push. There's Lund. Watch Marias right now. He's got to oh. run down below the eight. Oh. Wow. There's such a transition when you go below that white line. It really pulls that steering wheel. So a great job for Marias to keep his composure. You know, remember, 20-year-old kid. He's been fast all year. But we've seen him make some mistakes out there. So great composure. Now, he could have. He had a choice there. Could you back off or just go no, left? You he, back off. <laughs> if you're not in the points, why are we backing off? No, no. Unless you can't. Hypothetically, <laughs> you have two choices, hey. and he chose to keep it hammered, well, which is good. We understand the 02 car, Graham Rahal, got a warning for that little move he put on Marias. As okay. we see Justin Wilson up top of Tony Kanan, and Kanan, as Jan said, is fighting a understeer, a push in the car, and he has dropped back all the way to, let's see, 10th uh, spot. So we're looking back off of TK's car here. Jan, go ahead and circle. You see what I see on here? Those C scoops. You have, you have the wheel infills and another option, these optional packages where these guys have 300 pounds more downforce is that C scoop that adds a little bit more downforce and grip to the car. He also is running wheel kickups. That's where Jan squared those boxes. Those kickups give about another 120 pounds of downforce. And from a quick scan up and down pit road, it looks as though the Penske cars are not running the wheel ramps or kickups. And that's right there. We'd be able to see the top of them right in front of the tires, and we, we don't see them. So they're the, they're the only cars that I've ID'd out here, Jan, that don't have those kickups. Nor C-scoops either. Nor C-scoops. Guys, as you watch Ryan Briscoe and Scott Dixon try to put some distance on Dario Franchitti, watch the way Dixon is running right tucked up behind. I just checked, and I'm watching, and, and even though he pulls out a little bit, he is trying to make fuel. This is one of the things that right now Mike Hall and Scott Dixon are trying to do, not because they need to right now, other than they want to see if they can get one extra lap. Remember, Mike Hall likes to count backwards from lap 200. They want to do their R&D right now. That's why he's not going for the lead. Ryan Briscoe with just a slight advantage on Scott Dixon as 39 laps have been completed. Third is Franchitti, followed by Carpenter and Castro Nevis. At Chicagoland Speedway, the three championship contenders are running first, second, and third. Uh, pit stops are being made. Green flag pit stops. Ryan Hunter Ray has completed his. He lights up the tires and gets back on the racetrack. And for a driver, there's Ryan just getting out of pit road where it was 60 miles an hour. When you go on that flat, bumpy section, there's no banking out of here, and the tires are cold now to pressure. That is the most challenging thing for a driver. And nerve-wracking because you can't give anything away under green flag racing. It's, that's a tough, tough deal in, in cool conditions. E.J. Viso also making a pit stop. Here comes the lead pack to go around Ryan Hunter Ray. And there is Sarah Fisher in the Dollar General car with her pit stop. Ethanol being pumped in, and Mike Conway is also on pit lane. TK hopefully will get some of that push out of the car. Yeah, let's see. I, let's see if they maybe go for a little bit of wing change here in the front of that car. If you had a push, you would want to add front wing. We'll find out if they did adjust that. We'll keep an eye on them. Okay, they've done it with tire pressures or... Oh, it looks like Marco's yes. having a tough time getting away. Did they get the hose on that, or did he just kind of stumble yeah, getting I out? I think he just stumbled. Yeah, I saw that gun back there. Yeah, there goes. Look at this. Thomas that's Shepard. racing right there. Even though they're on pit lane, that's coming out of pit row. That's where I was just talking about, on cold tires. Ryan Briscoe, the leader of the race, drops down onto the apron of the racetrack, and he comes down for his first schedule pit stop on lap number 48. Down to Lindy Thaxton. In comes Ryan Briscoe as we still wait to see Dario and Scott 
Dixon come down pit lane and boy talk about the pressure on the pit crews of the guys who are in the fight for this championship points race as we said before Briscoe's crew uh, has won the race on pit road the last two races he's in getting his tires and fuel Roger Penske telling him several times in his first stint great job Ryan keep it up Robbie and the outside front and crew chief Brent Schmidt he's been pumping up his crew they want that same kind of response they had out of this team at Kentucky looks like no changes for number 20 Ed Carpenter's back out with a new set of Firestone Firehawks and just in front of him is the 06 point Oriole Serbia but look at Helio Castro-Nemis with his first round of pit stops. and we saw Scott Dixon also drop down into the apron of the racetrack and Elio is away lighting up the tires And here is Dixon. And once again, Dixon's gone a little bit longer than his competition out there, just stretching that window. Right behind him is Dario Franchitti, his teammate. Here's Dixon stop. Dario is going to pit ahead of him. They both were able to save fuel by not running in the front. That's going to be helpful later. Easily beats Franchitti out. And here comes to the start finish line. Both the two Penske cars are just flashing by start finish line, but he's not up to speed yet. There we see Frank Heaty rolling out of pit road. There's a yellow car that Penske cars with a head yep. of steam. They're going to get him. Go. They're going to get him. But they haven't caught Scott yet. Scott's just going into turn three. But remember, they've been on track now for a couple laps. Their tires are up to pressure, up to temperature. A pretty good gap. They're going to close in on there, but they're not going to go by Dixon. He got the position. That is a benefit of going a couple laps. We've seen that so many times. If you can ride around and save some fuel, as Jack Root had said earlier, that pays big dividends. You run faster, longer on hot tires. Marco in a lot of uh, traffic. That's Rafa Matos up ahead of him. There's Marco in the Meyer car. Did you notice how high he was? He just poked up a little bit higher than everybody else. Well, he's been there. running up there all night long. Yeah, absolutely. He loves it up high. We pointed out that Marco appeared to have problems getting out of his pit box. Let's take a look at the uh, stop. Waiting on the fuel. Clear, clear, clear. Clear, clear. Just a little hesitation with pulling that fuel probe out. Thankfully, they held him. He didn't tear out of there while the guy was still engaged. That's when we see those horrific incidents, you know, guys tearing that thing and dragging the fuel hose down the pit lane. Here's fifth, sixth, seventh on back. See how he's, this is back on board with Marco. Look at in the corner. He just likes to be up a little bit higher than everybody else. Look at this pack. Whew. Carpenter is leading that pack. He is in fifth position. Schechter right behind him in sixth. Seventh is Kanan, and he's racing the, alongside Mario Marias. It'll be interesting to see what Kanan's got here, because we know he had a push in the car earlier on and was having to lift off the gas. Let's see if he can Look run at a little Dixon's bit. Dixon's in-lap right there in the middle, 214, too. Woo-hoo, that's, so, that's so where he came. And that's where he is leading this race, because of that in-lap speed. Challenging it, coming down off the banking in turn three, hitting the flat. That's, that's beyond just going for the win here. I mean, to be able to push it like that when you're driving for the championship, you know, there's no caution. He's just flat out getting after it. They're too wide all the way through the corner. Guys, I want to take you back to little things. All the teams that made those green flag pit stops. Now watch Oreo Serbia when they drop the jack. He lights up those Firestone Firehawk tires more aggressively than you would under normal circumstances. Why? Because of the plummeting temperatures. We're at 60 degrees, ambient temperature. They want to build as much pressure as they can. All the drivers talked about it with their crews before they made those green flag stops. Wow, intense racing, and here is a battle up front. Dixon to the bottom, Briscoe on the high side. Now, why doesn't Briscoe learn a lesson from Dixon saying, I don't really need to pass you. Why don't I ride behind you and pay you back and save fuel like you did to me on the first stint? And gain that lap back under fuel. Yeah. But he wants to lead the race. Well, good for him. He wants to get the, he wants to get the couple <laughs> points there is for doing that. Or maybe he's just sizing it up on the high side for what he thinks is going to come in the last 10 laps of this event. I would say Briscoe wants to lead this thing. He already hit the overtake, and he's done it yet again, and still Dixon was able to get the better of him there for a moment. 
first four cars, five cars within a half, uh, four cars within a half second of each other. So that tells us if you're running equal somebody on the high side and you go for that overtake button, you can't get the pass done unless you have help because he's got his wingman coming up behind. Here comes Castro Neves. He said before the race in pre-race, I don't know if I can count on help. He's getting help right now. That will help him get by Dixon. So does he go for another push of the overtake button right now to get that done? Yeah, he's oh, Robbie, yes, he, he did. did. Yes, he did. 20 seconds of added hose power right now. But he's not getting it. I mean, he's not there. Dixon's just staying right there at his oh. left rear. Dixon's now going to get some help. Here comes Frank Keaty. It's the two battle of the two teammates. Like, hang on a minute. If this <laughs> and guy's that, getting help, I'll come help and you. And if you're Carpenter back in this whole next path that's further back, they love to see these guys all side by side because when you're running side by side, you can't run as fast as your single groove racing. So there's Carpenter. He's got a whole group behind him, and he's yeah. looking up ahead and saying, those guys are coming on back there. There you go. There there you go. Oh, baby. It looked like he had <laughs> such a peaceful ride out there going out the front, didn't it? Till you went back. Carpenter about four seconds behind these four, running wheel to wheel for the lead. Once again, you won't miss a thing on IndyCar nonstop on Versus. Stay with us for more at Chicagoland. Sixty-six laps completed in the peak antifreeze and motor oil Indy 300 from Chicagoland Speedway in Joliet, Illinois. A great battle up front involving Ryan Briscoe, Scott Dixon, Elio Castro Nevis, and Dario Franchitti. And Franchitti heads to the high side of, of Elio. Meanwhile, there's a four-second gap back to Ed Carpenter, who's running fifth. Mario Marias is behind him. Andretti has moved up nicely. Remember, we've talked about him using that high lane, and it's worked for him. And here we are looking at that group you just talked about, Bob, from TK's view. A lot going on in front of him. We've been riding on board with him a little bit, and we still hear him have to use the throttle on and off. And he's going to get a run up on these guys. And now listen to the throttle. He's going to have to back off. Hear him get in there and back off the throttle. He just doesn't have anywhere to go. And I think he still has a car that's pushing up the racetrack just a little bit. That means that the, the front tires just aren't staying on the white line like he'd like it. Boy, these guys have been wheel to wheel, side by side for many, many laps. In fact, since the pit stops. Aerodynamically, you want to be single file so you can cut into that four second advantage that there is between fourth and fifth. But these guys aren't really doing that, are they? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you think you can get that thought process across right now? I don't think so. <laughs> They're not exactly working together, and they would need to. And Tony Kanaan had to have another lift there. And boy, you can see from that high shot how you lose that momentum. But here comes Danica. Now on the low side. Guys, when I went to the driver's meeting, the, Brian Barnhart was actually backing up what you said. He said, guys, you're going to go faster if you're in that second group and you get dropped. You'll go faster if you're all in a straight line. So obviously these guys didn't listen to Brian Barnhart. But the man leading that charge, Ed Carpenter, came on the radio just a minute, minute moment ago and asked Jeff Britton, what are these guys in front of me running? What's their speed? Jeff told him they're about the same. So curiosity might be killing the cat right now in Ed Carpenter. Marco Andretti had to come in. Turns out at that last pit stop, they only got a half tank of fuel in his car, so he had to come in because they told him, Marco, you cannot use that overtake assist when you come in. In 8.4 seconds, he's out. Yeah, we kind of thought that there was some problem there on his initial pit stop, and that answers the question. So Andretti loses all those spots that he made up running up there on the top side of the racetrack. And it's absolutely frustration from a driver when that happens but you can never give up. He's got to get back out there, run as hard as he can. Hopefully a yellow will come here, work to his advantage, and he can kind of sequence back up to gain his lap back, but you never give up. Good battle for second. Elio on the high side of Scott Dixon. They are running at 214 plus miles an hour. And they're catching some traffic. These cars are on the tail end of the lead lap, and this is going to make things interesting. They don't want to go down a lap, but the leaders are much faster. And you got, you got Conway, side by side there on the high side gonna make it tough look at him look on the high side out there look at elio outside of hunter ray up top big time 
way up high. That's one thing much different about Kentucky versus Chicagoland. You can easily, I mean, it, it's wild, but you can run three grooves if you have to, and he's going to do it. Yeah, and that's what I say. You got EJ Vizo and Conway just side by side. Neither of them are giving off, so this lead pack's going to have to go to the high lane to get by him. And Briscoe has done so. Now here comes Dixon. And that's as high as Scott Dixon has been all day. So he was like, uh, I hope I got grip up there because he was running on the low side. Any chance he could get. I don't think his car likes it up there. No, but look at, you would have thought Dixon would have just kind of carried momentum by those guys, but now he's slotting in and he needs to use the draft off of uh, EJ there just to keep the momentum going. Watching to see if he used overtake. That would be an ideal opportunity to use overtake, and he's not. He not. feels he's he's got the pace without it. But I think you don't you want to take advantage of this while you have a shot. Not that Castro Nevis is really going to get away. 77 laps completed. We're on lap number 78, and now Dario will move up on the high side of Scott Dixon, or at least take a look up there. Yeah, originally came along and kind of gave a little push to Scott, but had enough momentum to say, hey, what do I got up top here? If your car is how you like it low, when you go high, the engineers tell me they loosen up. So if his car is dialed for the low line, he doesn't look comfortable to me as soon as he has to go high. And yeah, yeah, and I, yeah. I got to tell you guys that what's going on right now, all of your top three guys, including, well, let's add Dario Franchini in third and Briscoe, they're all venturing to that high side for one reason. They know they're going to have to eventually get there. And even though they don't feel like their cars are stable there, their spotters have told them and their, stra their, their, their tacticians have told them, got to go up there and take a look at it. That's exactly what they're doing now in this race traffic, getting a feel. Yeah. And they need to get that field, just like you said, Jack. They're going to come along other groups of cars where they're going side by side, and they got to figure out what kind of car and what balance they have on that high side. Now, every once in a while, when there's three grooves, the sandwich closes when you try and shoot the gap. And that's what happened to Tony Kanaan not too long ago. He tried to slice his way between two cars. The Oscar Mayer big bite all of a sudden didn't like to look at that. Whoa, I'm getting out of there. That's too tight. That's not my kind of sandwich. There you heard it, just rolling into the corner. You know, it's one thing to be brave, and then there's one thing to sit back and say, I know that's not a good spot for now, me remember, to be. Remember earlier I said you do have an option to lift? And well, you sure you do. You see? It but that was with Mario Moraes. He had a whole <laughs> head of steam. He just dropped down below it. There's there's different scenarios to it. Elio Castro Nevis leads here at Chicagoland Speedway over Scott Dixon, Franchini, Briscoe, and Ed Carpenter. 82 laps completed. and live coverage of the IndyCar race at Chicago Land Speedway. 2009, most cautions occurred at Indy. Eight, fewest, one at Edmonton and Kentucky. We have had no cautions tonight, and the average race speed with 87 laps completed, 210.134 miles an hour. EJ Viso is on pit lane. Those who pitted early first time around are destined to pit early second time around. So the the order up front on the left of your screen will be interesting because we certainly saw that Briscoe and Castro Neves were on a much earlier cycle than the target boys. And it will be interesting to see. I mean, we saw what a brilliant job Dixon did to gain the lead of this race because of his inlap. It was smoking fast. So amongst these four, it will be neat to see where they cycle back out. And I'm really amazed, this, this group of four of the Penske and NASCARs, they've pulled out eight seconds back to that second group that's being led by Carpenter. So they're, they're eking away. Mike Conway comes in and the Dad's Root Beer sponsored machine. Finding his pit box. Fortunately, he got a lap down during that battle. But boy, the one thing about Mike Conway is he pushed, I mean, he ran low. We got to see Scott Dixon run high, and that showed us something for the end of the race. Dixon now right on the rear wing, and we have a caution. Yeah. And uh, 
Hideki Muto is in the wall. Boy, the back end of that car is mm -hmm. heavily damaged. So this now equalizes all the leaders. Anyone who just pitted, that hurt them. But all the leaders who did not pit, it doesn't matter if you're saving fuel or not, everyone's going to hit the pit road. Of course, if you save fuel, you might spend a little less time on pit road, but it'll equalize now the strategy. So refreshing. Was that Mike Conway that just pitted? So yeah. it's not a good thing there, yeah. is it, guys? That's not good. Yeah. Elio is the leader. As the caution comes out here for the very first time. And well. the Delphi safety crew at the car of Hideki Muto. Here's a replay. There we see him already in the wall, already sideways. That was early. Yeah, real early on the entry. Just sliding there. You know, the farther you go and the more things that fly off the car, the better. That means it's dissipating energy, and thankfully he's climbing out on his own power. But the farther you go, the better. A little bit of a limp getting out of the car, but it looks like he's okay as now the pit crews. So, so much for that idea of watching green straps to see where the, the <laughs> Penske and Ganassi guys sorted out with their in laps and out laps. This pays best dividends for Penske because we believe that the target Ganassi team was on a better fuel strategy certainly by the first stint so now this this equalizes it and that plays in their favor exactly it brings it back to square one that little advantage they had where dixon went further is now squashed but let me let me interject here for one second guys remember that all these tacticians what they're doing is they're counting back from lap 200 so tim Sindrick may say wow we can get back and we're going to gain on, on on dixon and frankiti but he also knows right in his own mind now that elio castroneves couldn't make the same amount of fuel as dixon and Frank Keating, and it cost him an extra lap. When we get down to that final pit stop, that's when it's going to be crunch time. Agreed, Jack, but it doesn't mean you couldn't find a way to make some better fuel. You knew that in stint one, you got beat, but that's why they're down there running the, the calculators to see, okay, they got us on fuel at the moment. Let's figure out how we get back at them. Well, we know Elio's great on the high side because he smoked those guys when they went by traffic. When I say smoked those guys, I'm referring to, to Dixon and Briscoe in terms of the way he got by the traffic there to go to the lead. Farthest we have gone at Chicagoland Speedway before the first caution flag prior to tonight was 87 laps in 2004 and our first waved on lap 93 tonight. So we are very close to the halfway point of this race already. And a lot of debris on the racetrack over in turns one and two where the crash occurred. This is a good opportunity. We saw that Marco came in a little bit ago to get fuel because they didn't get enough fuel in. So at least now he can stay out on the track, get his lap back. Now he doesn't have a full tank of fuel. Right. You know, he's going to need something else to help him later, but at least now he's back in sequence with being on the lead lap. At the tail end of the lead lap, yes. So when he stays out, he'll get the, the wave by. And it's helpful. It's helpful. Certainly, I mean, he was, he was not looking good if they stayed green in that circumstance. Yeah, so he's got that back. Again, he's not, he can't go the length of everybody else once they cycle into the pits right now, but you're not fighting for your lap back anymore. When they do hit pit road, I think it's worth saying that you just need to make a clean stop. You know what, if you gain a position or lose one at this point, I don't think it really matters. And let's also remember, maybe this is finally what we need for Ed Carpenter to close that gap between yeah. the first group and yeah. the second Good group. Point. Then we can have not just four cars, yeah. but everybody. Five, six, seven, who knows? <laughs> yeah, Carpenter's guys did a great job in the pit box at Kentucky. There are your top three on the left part of your screen as everybody finds his pit box. Elio, the first to arrive of the three. Incredibly important to hit your marks so your right front tire changer doesn't have to move his position. 7.3 for Elio and the same for Dixon and Frankini just a little bit slower but still gets out third. And here comes Ed. That was Risco that had trouble. Yep. Yeah. Remember I said, oh, I just want to get in and out clean. But there was something that went amiss with Briscoe. How many did he lose? He lost four spots. Oh, and Weldon is stopped on pit lane. This doesn't look good. 
The National Guard car appears to be silent. Looks like another maybe at an axle. Yep, an axle. Half shaft. And with Briscoe, the fueler did not look very happy when we were watching oh. him in this pit stop. So that could have been the problem there. When Briscoe came in, he did ask for a half turn of the front wing. He has not been saying much this race, but Roger Penske has. You see him pull out there right now. Roger has told him, keep your head in this, Ryan. You've got plenty of time and be careful when you are driving that low line out there. Too well, far away. Yeah, did you see yeah. did you see how tight the fuel hose was on that? And did you see the orange mark where his left rear was supposed to be? He was a good foot and a half away from there. Yeah. That was the problem. Weldon out of the car. The only two-time winner in tonight's field has given it up. Remember Jack was saying that you want to there he can see the axle, there's a problem. Remember Jack said earlier, you really want to aggressively light up the tires. Well, in this case, it yep. broke the axle. All right, under caution here at Chicagoland Speedway, nearing the halfway point. Scott Dixon is now the leader. Dixon and Castro Nevis running one, two, under caution here at Chicagoland Speedway. Ryan Briscoe dropped all the way back to eighth spot. This is the discussion after the pit stop, which you can see confirmation that when Ryan Briscoe didn't get close enough, that if the fueler can't get fully engaged, All right, watch happens. as he pulls in, Yeah, Now, Matt Glass is the fueler. He looks, he thinks it's seated, he's not sure. See how he lifts up his tinted visor? Once again, and make sure and see it's close. It is stretched as far as he can go. In fact, that's why he wasn't sure that he could get it seated. He was way beyond what they call the spotting tape there. So that was a tough spot. Now go on board. Now watch Glass. See, he's not sure. See how tinted the lid is? See how stretched it is and how far away he is from the spot tape bound by the outside, by the inside tire? But he's already lifted the visor up. Now it's just futility. Get as much in there as you can. And boy, there is frustration. One thing when you're in a championship chase, guys, is one thing about the driver and about the tactician, but every single member of a pit crew, all they do, even though they work for about 108 seconds in a race, they say, please don't let me be the guy to screw the pooch. And with that fuel rig, Jack, you know, the pit guys, they can put the fuel rig where it sits on the other side of the wall, wherever they want. They want it to be as tight a line as it is, can be when it's come from the tank to the car, so it's not traveling any extra line through there. But to make that work, you have to hit your spots. Yeah, and he reason. was off, by my estimation, by about a foot on that spot. Yeah. All right, Scott Dixon warms up the tires getting set for the restart. Dixon has led 14 laps of 99. This is the 10th race that he has led this year. He's led seven of eight ovals. The only oval he has failed to lead at was Texas. There's Elio Castro Nevis running in second position for Team Penske. Third is Dario Franchitti running the yellow colors for LifeLock this weekend. Back in fourth position is Ed Carpenter. Who finally has closed the gap. Yep. Driving for Vision Racing. Behind him is Thomas Schechter, who has moved up nine positions since the start of the race. Mario Marias is having a good run. He's sixth for KB Racing Technology, and there is Rafa Matos. Rafa Matos, another one of those guys that is in the Rookie of the Year contention. He needs to show his stuff here on the mile and a half speedway. And the green flag comes out, and we are back to racing at Chicagoland. And the next car in line was Ryan Briscoe, so he's got a lot of ground to make up. And Robbie, you are correct. You want to keep that fuel hose as short as possible. The longer the fuel hose is, there's more friction. It flows faster if you don't. And that bit him this time, but because of where he stopped. Well, you just like to see guys like Schechter and Marias have a good run here tonight. They are wheel to wheel at the moment. Wow. Yeah. They did that on cue for you, Bob. Yeah, thanks, and guys. <laughs> and Carpenter now just coming into the frame. Carpenter is able to stay with yeah, Frank Keating. But look up front. We have a battle as Elio tries to grab the lead from Scott. 
And that's what you want to do to help your teammate. He knows that Briscoe's trying to play catch up. He's like, I gotta get ahead of Dixon to slow him down. Yeah, no, but that's even though the fact of running side by side, it's gonna slow that pack down for Briscoe to come along, but it's also gonna let Carpenter and the rest of the guys get up there as well. But Castro Neves might need some help, and I guarantee you that Dario Franchini's not gonna help him. Dario Franchini's gonna stay low and help Dixon, so someone may have to go high to help Castro well, Neves. They're coming. Maybe <laughs> they're it'll coming. be Marias. Yeah, it might be Marias. I tell you, last year, Ed Carpenter running fourth there, we know what run he had at Kentucky, you know, dominated the, Here comes the last 25 laps. Look, Here, at, look at him go. He's a rocket ship. Wow. If he can stay high, he'll help Castro Neves. Yeah, I was going to say Carpenter was going to be that guy because of how good he was in Kentucky. Yeah, see, now Castro Neves looks in the mirror. He says, oh, now I've got help up top. I have help up top. So slide up high. <laughs> Come on, Mario, catch up to me. You know, one thing to consider with Mario Marias when you have those 20 pushes to the overtake button, Mario Marias has already used 13 of those allotted to him. That he used to his advantage to get up there on that high side. There he comes, Jack. Yep. Castro Nevis is like, come on, keep coming, baby. Well, this is this is gonna just really give us that pack racing like yeah, we saw yeah. <laughs> like we saw yesterday in warm-up. Look at that. If you're just sitting in the right if fans. If you're sitting in the stands or you're just sitting at home on the couch, just look at this. Look at Schechter. Schechter was thinking, I'm going to poke up top and go three wide on you boys. And TK's got a good run going. has come down to the Firestone stand to take a look at some of this exciting racing. I know you'd like the National Guard car to be in the midst of all that, but let's talk for a moment about the half shaft braking. Is part of it maybe because these guys are trying to light the tires up to get some heat in them? Yeah, you know, it's just one of those things. It's unfortunate. You have to do that on a night, night like tonight, but I didn't actually light them up too much. It was uh, just weird. It kind of uh, went before we'd even really left. So uh, that's unfortunate for the National Guard Panther racing team, but we'll have to, uh, you know, work hard bounce back from this. Dan, you've had a chance to watch some of this side-by-side -side racing. All right, who do you like? Oh, we've got a car up against the wall, fellas. Marco. It's Marco, just scraped the wall, not a big hit at all. In fact, he's keeping the car going, but the second caution of the evening does come out. So that's why you got all those guys in the pack. They can take their breath now. You know, you can catch your breath. <laughs> I just did. I just did a bunch of carrier landings. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, we knew Marco liked the high side, but not that. Not that not high. The, not that high. Right. He's wiggling it to see if anything's broken, but uh, that was hair raising. Let's take a look and see if we can determine what happened aside from the fact that he just gets up a little high. Yeah, I mean, we said he liked the high side. He was already running high. He just got too high to where there was a little bit of marbles and debris. What? Look at the dust. Look at the dust. And it was a Newman Haas Lanigan car ahead of him that he was just close enough to where it took some air off and he got that much higher. And they think the car's okay. Yeah. Send him back out. Hey, we can replace those tires and off you go, Marco. Okay, so he just brought out his own yellow. Yeah, now and filled up. Yeah, look at <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah, that's that a lot a, of rubbing. That was just a gentle hit all the way around. There, we're looking at the tires. You can see where it got the wheels right in the rim there, but not, not horribly. Obviously, they didn't think it did anything to the suspension. Yep. Wow. I'm sure he'll jerk the wheel back and forth yeah. right now just he to make doing sure. He was way in. Yeah. You know, nothing feels way goofy or doesn't snap anything. Last year here was his best finish at Chicago Land. So we uh, take a bit of a breather here. Schechter has moved into third spot. It's been 15 the, laps since they pitted, but when, they? It's, when it's yellow, they pit again. Yeah. I mean, it's one of these deals where it is such an advantage to pit under yellow because you lose a lap every time you pit under green. You just got to do it. Absolute 180 from the strategy and thought process of road course or street course racing. Quick look there at Tony yeah. George on the headset. Yep. This season, college football is on versus Saturday, September 12th, 3.30. Wyoming Cowboys host the number two Texas Longhorns. And then Saturday the 19th at 7 o'clock Eastern, the Florida State Seminoles head to Provo to take on the BYU Cougars. College football is
is on versus and the weather here at Chicago Land Speedway tonight feels like football weather. Very very cool and windy. But some great action on the racetrack as Ryan Hutter Ray pulls away from his pit box and goes back. Well, he, into the race. Into, he came into pit road. He thought the pits were open and they waved him by, so he wasn't able to get into pit road and make his changes. Oops. My bad. I'll go on. Well, the points continue to shuffle, and now Scott Dixon, as they run, is in the points to lead with a five point margin over Briscoe and a six point advantage over Dario Franchini. This championship is going to go right to Homestead Miami Speedway, as it should. Open well, the pits. Yeah. Still apparently trying to get the field properly aligned before they open the pits. So you don't think we're going to see any split strategy maybe among some of the team cars up front? I mean, we I know just, it, it's a big deal to come in under yellow on a super speedway because anytime you do under green, you're going to lose a lap. I just think the leaders will pit. There'll be, you know, there could be someone mid pack that tries something different, but. General rule of thumb: if it's if it's a caution, take it. Yeah. You know what's funny though? Listening to some of the front runners, Tim Sindrick just told told uh, Elio Castroneves to pit, and Elio sounded surprised. He says, "You sure you want to pit? You sure you want to pit?" Yeah. And Tim Sindrick very calm, very calmly said, "All right, how about if we do it this way? Just follow Dixon." Oh, oh okay. monkey see, monkey do. Well, he's pretty confident but Scott's going to pit then. But that's a good that's a good strategy, and no, it's pretty common. Yeah, he actually didn't follow him. He almost tried to get in before Schechter's going to stay out. Uh, see, that's and funny so that you mentioned that, Robbie, because that's your team. That's your team. <laughs> I know. Well, no, and I see, I see Frank Keedy and Briscoe coming in, too. I thought some of those guys may have just sliced it up a little differently. All right, let's see how things go on pit road this time. I know Ryan Briscoe will be looking for redemption. You bet he'll be close to the wall this time. Yeah, he's right in there. And everybody's taking tires. Marias out. Frankiti. Plus two for Marias, plus two for Frankiti. Yeah, Mato's picking up two points. Now, did, two positions, I should did say. Did Marias take on tires? As we, as we were focusing on the lead group there, I just saw Briscoe, uh, Frankiti. They definitely all took tires. Okay, so we anticipate a green flag in just a few laps here at Chicagoland. Welcome back to Chicagoland Speedway. On board with uh, Ryan Briscoe here as he comes in and this time make sure he gets close enough. And he still has a bit of a tough time. He has a slight angle and there's a little bit of a second hit to try and get the fuel. You can see the car streaming by. Part of that is he has the be best pit position on pit road, but that's because it works best when you're leading. When you have to come in around other cars, that's actually a tough spot to beat. Here we go. Briscoe restarts in 12th spot as the green flag comes out. The two who did not pit are up front, namely Thomas Schechter and Tony Kanaan. And Frank Keedy timed that brilliantly as they pass the start finish line. He's up through the gears, went by Marias. Remember, when the green flag falls for a restart, you can pass anybody. You don't have to get back to that start finish line. Look at Rafa Matos. He's right in the middle of things here for Luso Dragon Racing. Sure yeah. enough. You look behind Schechter, and there's only a couple cars back, and then you see Marias. And of course, Marias pitted. Schechter did not. Look that's why Matos. I think. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but that's why I think you pit because look, it didn't gain Kanan nor Schechter much at all because the guys who did pit are right behind him. And, they, and, they, and they've got fresh tires and they're full of fuel. Exactly. This is Ed Carpenter. And look at Frank Keedy, that other yellow car up there on the right on the high side. He's got big momentum working. Mo momentum. I'm going to get that out later. That's okay. going to it's going to show itself. Didn't later, mean to like steal it. your thunder there. No, that's a good setup. <laughs> but in the last 30 laps, we're going to oh, see that. Oh, look at that car. You don't know. Come on, man. Ed's driving with some confidence there, yeah, boy, he is. isn't he? Yep. Again, Matos up there on the high side, though, trying to make Ooh. it three wide. Do you see him wiggle? Do you see the, the rear of that car? Matos has just wiggled back and forth in the rear as it sparked. 
Well, that's because he just came in and got tires, right? We saw the same thing at the very start of the race. But of course, Jan, you don't want to lift. You just want to keep it gassed up and yes. go. No matter no, not, no matter if it's moving around a little bit like that, you just gas it and go, don't you? That's right. That's They're lined up better now than they were at the start of the race. Look at Dixon. Three wide back Dixon. here. Dixon on top. Are you thinking points when you're up top there? I would think you were thinking points all the time now if you're in the championship battle. Look at that shot. Oh, man. 14 cars separated by one second. Oh, that's a tight group right there. Man, look at this. Watch the car in Danica the middle. Rafa Matos. Matos. Excuse wow. me, look out. Coming through. They didn't touch, but they got closer than already being close. Mario in the middle of a three wide. Wow. Look at this formation. isn't just one group that's yeah. three wide. They're they're three wide, three, four deep. Dixon though is very impressive. He wants to he wants to get up to the front there on the high side. So earlier when we were saying he wasn't as good on the high side, well, forget we were saying that. There's Serbia. He's got a shot of him coming up high as well. <laughs> Look at that pack. Just oh. intense wheel to wheel racing. At 211 miles an hour, they're doing this at an average. Oh, you just, the intensity in your arms, your forearms is just, you, you're watching everything going on around you and you're just waiting for a yellow to catch your breath. Great action. You can see it on IndyCar nonstop on versus. Tony Kanaan leads at Chicagoland. When we went away, Tony Kanaan was leading the race. He is currently in fourth spot. All kinds of activity on the racetrack. 2009 saw 20 lead changes at Kentucky, the most at any racetrack. And we have had 13 tonight, and we're on lap 130 of 200. Guys, there's no reason to believe that we shouldn't get more lead changes. I've been taking a look. Now, the early speeds, the best speeds, were about 215 and a half, 215, 6 or 7. The race pace has slowed considerably by almost two miles an hour. As I've talked to a lot of the guys down here on pit road, it seems like almost everybody, despite that yellow, are still trying to make fuel. That's the case with Ed Carpenter in the 20. That's the case with Dario Franchitti, Dixon, and Marias. They're all kind of in that middle part of the race, just trying to see what they can get for fuel mileage and see if they can use it when it really counts. A shout out to Oriol Serbia. He's in fifth spot, driving for Newman Haas Lanigan. Robbie. And this is a guy who started in ninth up to fifth place right now. I just talked to the crew just a moment ago. They said there was a Lambda sensor problem with his motor earlier. Two stops ago, they made an adjustment to it. So in effect, he was down on horsepower. They made a slight adjustment to whatever this Lambda sensor is, guys. And obviously gave him a little more of a boost. And now he's pushing in the top five in the fifth spot. Full throttle or full horsepower is always a good thing. Absolutely. <laughs> Always. You know, so this is the, the, the time in the race is just where everybody's doing a little bit of posturing, like we just heard from Jack, saving some fuel. It's what's going to happen after that last stop, and there's no more pit stops. That's when it's going to get crazy. Target Chip Ganassi drivers lead with Franchitti first and Dixon second, followed by Marias Kanan in Serbia. Intensity of winning a championship. Not only are the drivers intent on winning, but so are the pit crews. They give it everything they can when their driver comes in for a pit stop. One crew and driver will be celebrating the championship at Homestead Miami Speedway, and you will be there on versus. Right now, Target Chip Ganassi leads 1-2. And they have had five one-two finishes. The last came at Richmond of this year when Dixon won and Dario finished second. 
Check out Mario Marias, who has joined those teammates. And Robbie, to answer your question, Robbie Floyd got back to us during the break. He did not take tires on that stop to elevate him two positions, but even with not taking tires, he's left this entire group and now joined the front. A good testament to the consistency you get from that Firestone rubber as he puts a little extra stint on them. As cool as it is tonight, I don't really think any of that's an issue. I mean, we're down to 56 degrees out there, so that that absolutely does help with that tire life. Carpenter and Ray Hall almost had a coming together there at the line. And Ray Hall and his teammate, Servia, check this out on the right-hand side of the screen. Ray Hall comes down to the bottom at the same time that Servia pushes him just below the line. He had to back off. Hello, teammate. <laughs> and, and, and usually, it's you have the spotters up top that are standing next to each other. You think those guys are hitting each other up there? Say, hey, yeah. what were you telling him? What were you telling him? Were you telling Servia to come down on me or not? So you know there's a little head bumping going up top above us where the spotters are an extra set of eyes passing info down to these guys. I'm just thinking about Mario Marias right now. He was in the middle of this, and he was fighting as aggressively as I've ever seen. And because of that, because he didn't lift, like you said, Robbie, he kept going, and now he's joined the front. Mel Caduno on pit lane. And they're taking a lot of time getting her back in the race, and there she goes. Justin Wilson there in the red and black Z-Line car. We haven't talked too much of him, but a pretty solid run for Dale Coyne. And again, the guy right behind him yeah. who, who loves the high side. We saw him leave a whole black rubber strip down the side of the wall. He's come in, put fresh tires on, and obviously no worse for the wear. And there's his little tire marks. We just went by yeah. him up top. And amazingly, he causes his own yellow, comes in, Changes tires and he's on the lead lap. Right. He didn't lose a lap. And by causing his own yellow and not losing a lap, before he said he had he had a problem because he was going to be down on fuel, he filled up on fuel. Justin Wilson there in the 18 car, his team, Dale Coin Racing, their headquarters is just down the road from Chicago Land. You know, Speedway. Castro Neves, we just got a shot of him there. He's dropping back. He's, he's down to 14th. Wow, Castro Nevis is in 14. There he is, the bottom of the screen. Isn't that amazing that he can fall that far back to 14th after the dominating run he had on the high side going to the front? It just shows you as race conditions change and you make adjustments to the car through the, through the pit stops or not through the pit stops of where you can end up in this field and how competitive and how quick it can change it from being second or third back to 11th 12th. Castro Nevis has led 23 laps in this race but finds himself back in 14th now a little more than three seconds behind the leader Dario Franchitti who's now led six of the eight oval races this year and nine races total for the season. At Chicagoland Speedway, Dario Franchitti leads his teammate Dixon with Briscoe and Mario Marias running in third and fourth. And there they are on your screen. Then we get back to the next group of cars led by TK and Serbia with Graham Ray Hall and Ed Carpenter also right there battling for position. And Schechter is on pit lane. Robbie? Well, Thomas Schechter last came in at lap 95, and he's now going on a new set of Firestone Black, so fuel, full set of fuel. He should be able to go the distance. He was talking about having problems with one driver in particular. I couldn't know who it was. I think it was Oriol Serbia, who he was disappointed in the way he was driving. But this guy was up front. Obviously, uh, you know, it didn't work for him the first time. He's hoping now with this clear pits, he comes out all right. We saw also Tony Kanan drop down onto the apron of the racetrack, indicating his pit stop. And here he comes, Lindy. And before this race, Tony said, hey, we have the 7-Eleven car back where it needs to be. We have a good car. Well, it's better, but he clearly doesn't have the speed and the power he wants to right now. In the earlier pit stops, they have done wing adjustments. This time, they make no changes. Just fuel the tires, and there he goes. Good stop 
for Tony Kanan. Ryan Briscoe is back up to third spot. So despite his bad pit, the pit stop, when he uh, pitted too far from the fuel hose, he's back up to third. And Bobby had to do it by using two pushes of his overtake button. I find it interesting that both Briscoe is down to just six remaining, while Frank Petey and Dixon have 17 and 18 pushes of the overtake button left to use. There we are on board with Briscoe. See, on those two pit stops that we saw out of sequence, it is still their last stop of the day. So they're not going to make an additional stop. But of course, while these guys are out here running flat out, they put them down a lap. If it stays green, they'll be okay. But catch a caution, those guys are cooked. Yeah, if, if the, the rest of this group that's the lead pack, Frank Keaty, Dixon, Briscoe, like you say, if they catch a yellow in pit, those guys are down a lap. Yeah. They're not going to get it back. Still, I like the strategy. <laughs> you should. <laughs> Do you like full throttle or just 95% throttle? No, Robbie, I like I'm just <laughs> pointing out there are options. <laughs> oh, you too. Uh, maybe Bob should be in between us. Oh, There's here Frank comes Dario. That gives the lead okay. to Briscoe. So there's one guy that's not waiting for a yellow, so those guys... Wow, he, he did 44. He was burning a lot of fuel up front. Ryan, of course, trying to earn the two points for leading the most laps. He's led 65 and is in the lead spot again. Here's Lindy with the pit stop of Dario. And what should be Dario's final stop? The last set of pit stops, his teammate Dixon got fuel and tires. Dario got fuel only. And he gets all this as the leaders pass by him out there on the track. Uh -oh, he is out. done, and Don't he go. is oh, oh man, from Hierro, and he's out now. Wow, that's a mistake that you don't see very often. But a great heads oh, up. Yeah. Great heads yeah. up by the right front tire changer to get his arm under there and push that gun out of there. And great heads up he didn't take off. Yeah. Because you, you oh. know, you get the timing in your head, okay, everything's ready to go, and they held him. Well, this is this is where this game's going to get really exciting. We've we've kind of gone through all our pit stops. Everybody's coming in for their last one. How they? Oh, look at the teammates! <laughs> wow. Yeah, remember the spotters are upstairs next to each other too. <laughs> Justin Wilson comes in in the Z-Line Designs car. Again, all this is fine. Anyone who's pitting now, including Frank Keaty, we see. That would be Briscoe peeling off, yes. yes. As we see these people peeling off, this is all fine as long as there's not a caution. If there's a caution, anyone who stays out is going to be ahead of the whole game. Lindy. Ryan Briscoe's crew are ready to work as fast as they can when he pulls in here. He has been complaining to Roger Penske this, this stint of a lot of understeer, and so they are going to make some wing adjustments while he's in here. Looks like Scott Dixon is always also going to be pulling in the pits this stop, and Ryan Briscoe finish, finishing up that Trying to get around Ryan Hunter Ray as he makes his way into the marks. His best ever IndyCar Series finish was last week at Sonoma, a fourth place. His mom, Dinia, is here. She came from Brazil, arrived this morning. He wants to show her he can do a little much better than that and take the victory here today. I talked to Jimmy Bassler just a moment ago, and he said this car is fast. And you saw there where Mirage was coming to the pit, they were spinning that umbrella, and that just helped give some color ID for him to hit his mark and hit his pit box. Here's Ed Carpenter making his final pit stop. This is all payday right now, payday right now under green stops. The Vision team of Carpenter, they showed us they could get it done in Kentucky. Yes, they did. That. So we may have seen Dixon on the apron, but he hasn't pitted yet. All right, fellas, I'm going to tell you what I think. I think Dixon comes in as Danica Patrick pulls out of pit road. I think Dixon tries to squeeze this two more laps. Why? Because then he won't have to fill a full tank of fuel. Remember, you get three gallons a second. We'll have to watch it as Danica's crew goes to work. See how they put the seven on the outside tire so she can see it when she pulls out of pit road. Graham Rahal has completed his service. Here's Dixon now on pit lane. And Elio Castro Nevis is also on pit lane. Lindy? 
Scott Dixon says his car feels good right now in the pit stops before this. They said, what do you want to change? He said, free it up, make it faster. I feel like I'm dead slow. He feels good now and he's out. Got to bust it out when you get out on pit road. He's got a big gap on Graham Rahal, who would be the next in line. There is Castro Neves coming out of pit road. Remember, cold tires, not up to temperature pressure. There is Dixon. And Briscoe now slots into second. Rahal, as they Speak depends on where you've pitted as they cycle through. Ray Hall drops to sixth. Almost a two second lead, however, between first and second now. Ryan Briscoe trying to catch up. And there is Elio running in third and, spot. And on his overtake button as we're watching him. Yeah. So Dixon leads. We'll be back with more on Versus. at Chicagoland Speedway in the peak antifreeze and motor oil Indy 300 at Chicagoland Speedway. Dario Franchitti and Elio Castroneves battle for the third position. Here's what happened to Dario, his last pit stop. Well, on when you're the outside front, Kevin O'Donnell, when he's done with the air jack, you usually throw it around the front of the car. He lays it down. Oh, because there was a wheel nut. Instead of the traditional where you normally throw it around the front of the car, he had to take his hand off the wheel gun to go for a wheel nut. Jack? And yeah, and take a look at this series of pit stops with Scott Dixon and also with Elio Castroneves. Forget Dixon for a moment. Watch Rick Reinemann on the back end on the outside. When they complete the stop, Dixon is able to pull straight ahead. But see, Reinemann is trying to get uh, Castroneves to crank the wheel because he thinks he's going to have to pull a hard right to get out. That cost him about two tenths of a second. And Jack, did you see Ricky Davis on the front? The way he heaved that, you could. That was yeah. a great angle to show. When you throw those air guns, man, he was sure that was clear. Yeah, look out on the other side. Yeah. The wall when that <laughs> thing's coming. 25 laps to go, and Ryan Briscoe has clinched the two bonus points for leading the most laps tonight. If Dixon leads the rest of the race, he will lead two laps less than Briscoe. Robbie. The number five Azul Tequila car. Jimmy Vassar, your driver showing so much patience out there that we haven't seen from him before. Did that Kentucky race that you got taken out in the pits, did that, you think that might have helped him in the long run to show that he could run up front with everybody? Well, I think he's been maturing all along, you know. Um, we're having a little bit of a heating problem with the Azul car right now. I think it's got packed up with a lot of uh, debris and sand. For some reason, we're a little bit slower on this last, uh, on this last uh, stint, but uh, he's been doing a great job, and uh, but right now it looks like Graham and Marco are they're catching up to us here a bit. We're going to have our hands full for the end of the run here. And you didn't even have to. You were telling him to go to fuel position one, full rich, and he was saying, I'm doing everything I could in, in two earlier. That car was running that well earlier on. Well, he was in the draft there with, uh, with the lead pack, and it makes it a lot easier, but it's a little bit of a different story now. So uh, here we are. We got, a, we got our hands full right here, so. His little car looks good, though. Thanks a lot, Jimmy. Wow. All those guys are... Viso isn't uh, running for position, but everybody else in that pack is. Marias with only three overtakes. When we look at Marco Andretti, he has had all kinds of problems tonight, but up on the top side of the racetrack, he has made his mark. We sure, we sure know where to look for Marco when any time we see him on the track. <laughs> three wide. Look how tight that is down low. So now you're back there. You're Ed Carpenter. You know you got to run. You don't have anywhere to go. So he's going to have to feather back on the throttle and just kind of wait to set some up because there's nowhere to go. <laughs> Unless Watching. you want to try and split that gap. No. <laughs> Fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth here. <laughs> Justin Wilson up there in ninth. Talk about evenly <sighs> matched. <Yeah. laughs> Get much tighter than that. Oh, you, Marco's you hear, drifting a little. And you heard you heard Ed come off the throttle just a little bit. Has to, or he's going to run right up on him. He's like, come on, you three. Like, somebody take the lead. <laughs> if somebody doesn't get in line here, I can't get through. 
Wow. Had to ease out. Oh, Look at the movement in the cars. Again, remember, we're 215 mile an hour laps. 209, actually, About that 200. last lap. Was yep. it was? Okay. But that's fast enough. Well, you t so what's that? Top speed is 215, 260. Yeah. Like you say, fast enough. It just kind of lulls you into security there, thinking they're not going that fast, but you throw that on top of it. That's bringing EJ Viso and Justin Wilson into the game here when they're running three wide. Viso is 18th, two laps down. Staying right up with this pack of cars. Man, these guys so, are just three wide. Who's going to sort out of this thing? Oh, look, look at Mariah's at moving up there with grip. And Robbie, you talk about the speed, and that was 210 in that group, but the leaders are doing 214 and 213, <laughs> showing that if you run three wide, you're just yeah. they're just Work losing. Yourself. I mean, they're they're forgetting about the leaders. They're saying, forget it, we're duking out amongst ourselves. Oh, oh Castro knows the wall. Been in the oh. third position at the time. With 16 laps to go, the car is going to come to a stop in front of the paying customers here. And he'll try to get to the inside of the racetrack to the apron. I'd say he's okay the way he was driving that car down there, guys. You see him working his hands. I'd say he's he's okay. Tim Sendrick looks on. Let's see what happened. Something in that yeah. right front. Yeah, the right front. Some suspension broke. Remember, Infineon, something broke on the car when he ended up flying. Now, of course, that was contact with Tony Kanaan. Yeah. yeah. That may have caused that, but that's two races in a row where something has broken on the car. Good this point. all by himself. Yeah. Kablamo. Very similar. Ed Carpenter had the same thing in three and four here last year. Just something broke on that right front. Sparks up right the track up into the wall. Into the wall. Yeah. Same thing. Robbie, let's talk to Tim Sendrick. Tim, at that moment when Elio hit the wall, I was talking to your crew, and they were saying that just how happy they were with the car. You just couldn't get through traffic, and then that happened. What happened? Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Just watching the replay, it definitely looked like something broke there. I'm not sure what, but uh, you know, certainly dropped down, and it, it's a shame because you know he was going to be right there at the end. But um, fortunately, it looks like he's up and out of there, so that's the best news. And this race was playing out. It looked like in your hands, finally. I mean, you moved up to third after you had so much trouble getting through traffic, and that happens. It's two weeks in a row. I mean. What's going on here? I don't know. I mean, uh, yesterday I can attribute, or last week I can attribute that to that, that uh, bump. Yeah, that bump with Tony. But um, <laughs> tonight I'm not sure what happened there. But he was certainly, he did a great job right before the pit stop getting ahead of those guys. And uh, it's unfortunate we're sitting here now. It's tough for you and tough for last year's winner, Elio Castro Neves. Elio out of the car. Okay but knows that something broke on the car, and that's why he got into the fence big time. Well, we only have 14 more laps to go here at Chicagoland Speedway. Who is gonna win it? Back here, I'm taking a look at the final strategy session, guys, and this is what I see. You've got Scott Dixon, and he has enough push to pass. He has enough overtakes that he can use even two on one lap. But take a look at Ryan Briscoe when he lines up. He's only going to have two left there. Dario franchitti has got 15, and I know, Jan and Robbie, you're liking the way Marco Andretti's running on a high side. He's only got five. So as far as I'm concerned, Team Ganassi, Target Chip Ganassi, they can use that overtake multiple times in the final laps. Poor old Briscoe's got to use his two very judiciously. All right, let's go back to last Sunday afternoon at Infineon Raceway and a couple of incidents with Elio. First of all, he got into some contact with Tony Kanaan and then turning into turn number one, the front suspension let go. He flew off the racetrack way off course and watch the right front you'll notice when you see the sparks it starts to hop yep. that right front is hopping if something in the right front broke again this time not because of contact it's because it let go still under caution with 12 laps to go in the peak antifreeze motor oil nd 300 10 laps to go 
points as they run. Briscoe with a 12 point advantage on Dario and a 13 point margin on Scott Dixon. Elio has been mathematically eliminated from title contention. It will go down to Briscoe, Franchitti, or Scott Dixon, who leads this race. And we have nine laps of hold your breath, <laughs> all out, no holds barred racing. Again, the first three end points are running first, second, and third on the racetrack. As the green flag comes out, here we go to see who's going to win it. And already the battle for fourth is going to go three Look wide. At that. <laughs> Look at Graham's got his right front between the tires of Marco as they're coming there. Man. That's Ed Carpenter in the yellow car looking for the high line. He's way up high kicking up dust. And there's Marias also. And look at Marco go to the high side. That's a shocker. The top <laughs> yeah. three. The top oh. three. Just oh, and a big wiggle for Dario Franchitti. So now when Franchitti gets up there and pushes along his teammate, are there orders, guys? I guess well, let's wait and see how that Not with unfolds. three races. Not with three races when there's three in the championship. It's all, in my and opinion, it, yeah, and every man for himself. But also, I think you throw in the Penske car there at Briscoe. You just got to do what you can at this point. Here yeah, but he's running, out, he's running out of overtakes, guys. He's used one. He's only got one left. Yep. He better pick the right place to use it. Yeah. <laughs> what is when and where and how and why is the right place to use that last one? Look at the pack coming. Look at Graham's getting in here. Marias is going to be here. This is going to keep everybody honest. Graham Rahal just got by Frank Kitty at the line, up to third. And he's by him. He, you're right. He got by him with a head of steam. Now he's going high. And he's still he's using his uh, overtake button right now. It's Emma Dixon. Look at Marias with her run up top there at the backside of Graham. We knew it was going to be good, guys. Five to go. Can't beat this. No, we knew it was going to be good. Ooh. Marias wiggling a bit. As Ryan heads for the top again, and look at Ray Hall. He's way up there. I just remember at the, at the top of the show talking about Graham and Marias and everything they needed. Briscoe I edges ahead. I don't need no stinking overtake. Look at this. <laughs> and he led that lap. He was ahead of him at the, at the line right there. Now, do you look think... Look at how close they are. Do you think Briscoe can play the same game? No, he can't play the same game because he's got rail behind. I was going to say, do you think he can play the same game he played with Ed Carpenter just to beat him off the line? Here comes Graham Rahal. He's going to help out Briscoe. But stay behind him. Don't go around him. 13 cars are on the lead lap, and they're all running within six tenths of a second. So, so look and at Jan Rahal has used the overtake button to carve his way to the front. He's pushed that button three times in the last three laps. Look at Matos there as three go three wide for the lead off of corner four. Dixon has the advantage. Look at Rahal though. And Rahal's in green. He's on the button. Look at this. <laughs> They'll come down for the white flag this time. Look at Matos up on top in the two car. And Briscoe's using the last push. It's out. It's He's over. Done. They come down for the white flag. One more tour of the one and a half miles at Chicagoland Speedway. And Briscoe leads by a foot or so. But now what Briscoe wants to do, he wants to maintain that position on the high side and hopefully get a run off of four. And he's getting help from Marias. Mario Marias comes back. Jimmy Vassar said the car wasn't as fast, but now it's fast. He's helping him. And he's got momentum. Not enough to get up on that high Meanwhile, side. Meanwhile, they're four wide behind. Here comes the win, and who is it going to be? Briscoe. Briscoe has the advantage, and he gets the win. Oh, man. Briscoe. Back from the frightening accident in 2005, but he's put all that behind him now as he records the victory. And the pilot has made the landing on the aircraft carrier, and now you can relax a little bit and take a breath. Ryan Briscoe.
wins for the fifth time in his career and the third time this season, winning also at St. Pete and Kentucky. And we saw exactly that same thing, how he sized up Ed Carpenter working the high side, and obviously he used that overtake push at the perfect time right before they came to the white flag. This is again going to go down in the record book as one of the closest finishes in IndyCar Series history. It is the fourth, the fourth fa uh, closest finished in IndyCar history, eight thousandths of a second. Lindy. And Roger Penske, you just told me that Ryan deserved that tonight. Why do you say that? Well, I think when you saw we got a little trouble here in the pits, and he drove it from 13th up to the front. And, uh, you know, good, good safe driving with the guys. I mean, they're tight, tight, tight all night. Dixon's a great guy to race with. Ray Hall had a hell of a run there. Hey, man. Congratulations from Chip Ganassi here. Hey. I was Roger. About it tonight, huh? <laughs> How did you decide when to use the push the pass? Because he only had two left and Dario had 15. Well, we had to use it to get up through the field. And then uh, certainly at the end, there had one there at the end. We waited for the end. Roger, go celebrate. Yeah, thank you. Just an unbelievable night of racing here at Chicagoland Speedway as Ryan Briscoe wins at Chicagoland. Chicagoland does not disappoint once again. Izod salutes a winning performance with Izod Victory Lane. Here's Robbie with Ryan Briscoe. And Ryan Briscoe takes his third victory of the season. And is the happiest I think I've ever seen Ryan Briscoe. Whether he wins second or third, that is a proud moment. And his team showing him some love. That was amazing what he was able to do with only one push left of the button. And I guess, I guess, Ryan, that was the right time to use that one push, huh? I guess so. Uh, man, Roger. <laughs> Tonight, man. Oh, Thanks, yeah, man. What a run. That's the best I've ever seen you run. Terrific run. Pretty big words from the man there. Uh, it's huge. This is a big win. Uh, I didn't think I'd have enough for Scott, but... Uh, once I got beside him, you know, the side draft just pulled me right there. And uh, I just waited until that last lap to try to use the, the push, and it seemed to work. I don't know if he was out, but uh, what a day. We're up and down. I made a mistake. Dude, thank you. Thank you. I made a mistake uh, in the first pit stop, and I, they couldn't get the fuel in, but um, this is the last lap. It reminds me of Kentucky a little bit, eh? You got some help from the number five, believe it or not. Well, he, he had a fast car today, and... Uh, well, I've got to thank him, I guess. Um, oh, I didn't even know if I'd won it. I, I was screaming, and then I was like, hey, guys, did we actually get this? So that's just awesome. Very happy. And in points also, you really took advantage of the situation. I believe 25 points now up and 33 points on the two target cars. That's their biggest objective headed to Japan. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, as I said, I think to win the championship, uh, we're going to have to win races. and. I was doing all I could to try to get Scott tonight because uh, I don't want him getting wins. You know, he's had enough this year. So hopefully hopefully we can stop those guys for the next two. You started the season with a victory. Right now, this looks like your biggest victory of your career. Ryan Briscoe takes Chicagoland, Jack. And uh, the guy that he beat by just a scant few inches got to watch that finish from outside. Scott, Scotty, you said before we got here that you kind of expected this outcome a little bit. Yeah, I've seen this movie several times <laughs> before, unfortunately. And uh, Chicago, you know, I just keep finishing second. So, you know, uh, the whole night, I think, you know, we, we drove a great race. The, the guys in the team did a fantastic uh, job. Pit stops were flawless, uh, you know, launched me up there a few times. But we just didn't have the speed, you know. Uh, our mile and a half dominance that we seem to have last year uh, on the target team is has really been affected and and we really need to play catch up to Pinsky. they're clearly a lot faster than us and uh that's all i had that's all i had left and he timed it right and uh definitely great job to to ryan and the team you know we left a lot of overtakes though on the table i mean briscoe used his final one on the last lap you had i the last count i think he had about seven left in the in the in the car what 
I think I, uh, I pushed overtake uh, every every lap from, from when we had the restart. Right. So, uh, you know, you have the, the 12 second delay there or 10 second delay. So you got to wait each time you see it turn off and you're like, you see them coming, coming, coming. What's that feel like? Uh, hey, you, know you want recycling. the lights. To, I know, you just want the lights to go away so you can push it again. And, uh, you know, I think we timed it great. We timed it. We started just down the back straight and it ran out probably just after start finish. But uh, clearly we didn't have enough speed and uh, credit to, to Team Penske. But, um, you know, got to thank the target guys. They did a fantastic job tonight. Bob? Scott Dixon finishes second by eight thousandths of a second. And now Chicagoland has three of the top four closest finishes in series history and four of the top six closest finishes. Great, great run here tonight as Ryan Briscoe celebrates the victory. The Peak Antifreeze and Motor Oil Indy 300 of Chicago on Versus is presented by Peak Performance Products. When you peak, you win. And by Apex Brazil. To learn more about our Brazilian goods and services, log on to experienceourenergy.com. And congratulations to Thomas Schechter, who is the Firestone pit performer of the race, spending a total of one minute, 30 and a half seconds on pit lane. Tony Canon second and Dixon third. And congratulations to Mario Marias, who turned in his best career finish tonight of third. Lindy? And for Mario, it just keeps getting better and better. Fourth last week and third this time. Talk about how your pit stops really played into your race today. Well, you know, the guys did a great job. All the pit stops were really quick. And, uh, well, the team has been working really hard this season long. And uh, I'm pleased that happened here. You know, my mom is here. She come from Brazil. She arrived this morning, so it's great. And I know you're driving for your dad the rest of this season. Talk about, I understand you had a little problem with your visor and then a problem with the radiator. What happened? Yeah, well, I don't know. The car stopped got a little bit hot, so I lose some power. And uh, with the tear-offs, uh, I don't know why they, they come just all off one time and start to get dirty, dirty, dirty. And one time I was not watching and look anymore, so it's pretty tough. But it all worked out. Mario, uh, congratulations. Thank you. Robbie? Dario Frank Keaty just told me it's not over with yet. You might have that 25 point deficit, but you know, Jack Root talked about how you had 15 pushes at one time. You can't always use those pushes, can you? No, I couldn't. I was kind of caught there at the end because um, Scott and I had worked so well together over the day pushing each other past other cars, and I couldn't move out to get behind Briscoe to try and make it three wide because there was no way I was going to push Briscoe past my own teammate. Um, that just wasn't going to happen. So I couldn't use those pushes because all I would have done was driven at the back of Scott. So that was kind of frustrating. Also, the right front tire changer also had a good thinking but trying to get that gun cleared away, but that seemed like it was what cost you. Here's here's it for your first time to see. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we just didn't pull it. They didn't pull the gun, and that, that that's what costs championships right there. You know, it's a real shame. We were in the lead there. The, you know, the target guys have been flawless up to that point tonight, and the target car's been pretty good. Maybe not fast enough to win but um, Scott and I worked well together but it just wasn't to be now there's two races still left this is far from over you made up a lot of ground at, at Sonoma but it is getting down to the nitty-gritty you need something to happen quick how can you how can you keep the hopes up well it's either gonna happen in Japan or Homestead or it's not and we uh, we can do it at both those tracks and we're gonna be pushing really really hard to make it happen um, you know both those tracks are more handling tracks than this one and i think we'll be in uh, good shape but we've got to keep pushing man we've got to keep keep going for it and uh we're not gonna we're not giving up absolutely no way the target boys are not giving up and uh we we've got two cars still in it i think that says it all right there guys yep dario finishes in fourth position here tonight and a salute to the winning team team penske on the number six car for ryan briscoe who wins the fourth closest finish in IndyCar Series history here tonight at Chicago Land Speedway. We'll be back to wrap it up in just a moment. Stay with us on Versus. Here are the unofficial results of the peak antifreeze and motor oil Indy 300. Briscoe wins. Serbia's second straight top 10. Schechter's second top 10 this year. There were 13 cars on the lead lap at the end of the race. And Tony Kanan in 13th was eight tenths of a second behind the winner of the race. Hideki Muto crashed out and so did Elio Castroneves. Kanan was not happy. And watch this, he's gonna just slide right down here into the middle. And now that's his teammate right there on his right. Look at the teammate kind of come down, big lift coming out of it. And we saw a big reaction after the checkered flag fell of TK after this. Look at him kind of stomping around. He's looking for Michael Andretti. And we are trying to figure it out. 
You can just tell by his eyes. Yeah. yeah. And remember, he was only eight tenths back in that 11th finishing place. Yeah. We were trying to figure out what it was that set him off. Well, and Graham Rahal uh, records a fifth place finish, his fourth top five on an oval this year. Robbie? And you were in the middle of some of that mess, Graham Rahal. I personally thought you had it. You were charging the hardest at the end. Did you think you had it? Yeah, I mean, I thought, I, I, honestly, when I went up high, I thought, okay, we're going to get it finally, you know, because the, the car had so much momentum. And honestly, all night, the McDonald's car was great. It was just, you know, trying to get our opportunity. And we got it, pulled out of the draft, went up high, and it just it just died. So, unfortunately, didn't quite have enough speed. But, uh, I mean, when you go up that high, the, you know, the, the distance that you're, you're taking there is massive and uh, just fortunate didn't have quite enough speed. The air jack didn't work properly. On your first stop, I believe it was, you dropped back quite a ways into the field and the, the team pulled together and let you move back up again. Yeah, I mean, uh, the guys worked really hard because I told them, I said, all right, we need a good good last stop here because, yeah, I mean, the one, the one stop we had fallen way back because you know, we sat with the car on the ground for a couple seconds before we even got it up to take the tires off. So that killed us. But, uh, you know, really, I think it was, uh, it was great what we did tonight. And as I said, the McDonald's car, it was uh, it was top notch tonight. We need to. I mean, this just shows that you know this team. You know, if we if we get a little bigger budget, we can develop a little bit more. We're gonna we can beat these guys. We can run with these guys. It's gonna take some effort, but uh, you know, for us to be where we are now, we gotta be pretty happy. Your teammate Oriol Servia finishes seventh, not too far behind you. Now, as far as the pushes are concerned, Dario said he couldn't use you know the pushes when he needed them most. You had five left. I'm sure tonight you'll probably go home dreaming. I could have pushed one here, one there, one there. Do you remember those times? You know what, honestly. See, I won't think that at all. And these guys, I'm sure, will you know pick on me a bit for not uh, for not using them. But as I just told someone else over there, the racing that close, the last thing I'm thinking about is pushing a button on the steering wheel. I mean, honestly, just trying to to look forward and make sure I don't uh, hit anybody or anything. Uh, that's my biggest concern. So truthfully, you know, pushing a button really didn't didn't sound too appealing at that point. Go grab a Big Mac. I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> grab Lindy. Ed Carpenter, would you say the first half was a different race for you than the second half? Yeah, you know, the first half, I thought we were going to be pretty good. You know, we got we got up to the front pretty quick, started saving fuel. And, you know, one, one at Kentucky, we were really good in the pits. And tonight, we, you know, just couldn't keep pace in the pits. I don't know if it was me and my in and outs or it what, you know. So but see, we lost a little time there. And then late in the race, got more understeer. And other guys just seemed a little quicker. I think maybe we may have had on a little too much downforce at the end. It's hard to say, though. The, the Menards John Manville car was still really quick. Just a couple times got bottled up, you know, buying guys running three wide and two wide, nowhere to go. So had a good car. The last lap, I think we started started it in tenth, and still ended up sixth. So it could have been worse, could have been better. You know, after after Kentucky, anything less was going to be disappointing, though. Yeah, and we're watching this here where you're trying to get around those guys. Yeah, just sitting back there, you know, we're running like 209s and 210s, and I'm just watching the lead pack get away, and I'm asking my spotter, I'm like, come on, talk to these guys' spotter, and, you know, let's at least just run two wide, you know, so to, to try to catch up to the rest of the group. And the guys behind us were coming up on us fast, you know, so I was glad to see that yellow, you know, they went yellow right, right as we were running three wide, so we needed that to at least get a chance to have a restart and pass some more cars. Hey, Carpenter, thank you. Thanks. Jack? Lindy, we always thought we'd twist it up a little bit and talk about the final word and give it to Matt Giese because right here is where Ryan Briscoe was supposed to have the fuel coupler. Matt Giese was ready, and Matt, he was a little bit far out, and yet you had the wherewithal to stretch the hose to the optimum and make the perfect seat so that you could get some fuel in that car. It was definitely exciting. He was <laughs> he come in he come in a little hot and had the rear end of the car out a little far. I done what I could do. He dropped a car on the air jacks and I come unglued. What At that moment, I always say crew members, we don't give them enough credit because what they do is they may perform for about 108 seconds during the course of a race, but you sit there, I've watched you guys, it's like, please don't let me be. Please don't let me be the guy. For a second there, did you were you afraid that maybe you were going to become the guy? Uh, after it was over, it's a little exciting. I told Roger pretty quickly that he's too far out and they they let him know about it he got corrected at the end of the day it turned out all right and how do you feel right now you didn't even um, get to go to victory lane <laughs> no, I'll, I'll stay here and do work I'm relieved I'm just ready to get stuff packed up go home see the girlfriend hey final word guys sometime it's an unsung hero had the wherewithal to keep it all together stretch it as far as he could help put 
Ryan Briscoe into victory lane. Ryan led 71 laps, average speed of the race tonight, 177.685 miles an hour. Here are the point standings. Now, nobody changed in the top seven, and in fact, this is only the second time this year that the points lead has not changed. The leader has not changed. So off to twin ring of Otegi with Dario Franchitti with 25 points behind.